sector to you know, level their balance sheets for the purposes of M&A has been significantly constrained. Again, it's a consequence, I think, of some of the excesses that took place in the period before that. I think as far as Indian companies are concerned, we very rarely see Indian companies that do M&A as a consequence of money being available. So I think it's a question of does this make strategic sense? Can I afford it? And is the capital available? Then we'll do the transaction. So I don't think it's it's kind of the tail wagging the dog, which has been the case in some of the you know larger M and A that has taken place globally. So to that extent, I don't think it's such a significant factor. But yes, I mean the ability of you know all all capital is going to be constrained in in the immediate future. So whether it's capital markets, whether it's bank markets, whether it's credit markets, and to that extent, if there was a large M and A that was predicated on large financing being uh, raised, it will be impaired. But does that make you sort of wonder, especially in hindsight, after uh, some of the impact on the international world has blown out to India, that some of the M&As that were done on highly leveraged balance sheets, does that actually leave people with a little more uh, concern? Because cash flow that was very easy has also taken a hit. It should. It should. I think if you have situations where uh, you know too much or you know onerous levels of leverage have been taken on. In a scenario where a cycle could change or business cycles could change, that that should have people concerned. Uh, but as I said, I think by and large, Indian companies appear to be under leveraged at this point. There is clearly some amount of limitation on how much capital you can raise at this point. You know, valuations have corrected, so people's desire to raise equity at these levels has changed. I think it takes some months for. Expectations to get reset in a sense. But how have you taken to companies actually coming up with ideas, as would investment bankers themselves, with new products that have come into the financial market? And now, as one looks at you know various kinds of exposures that are there, some companies might have it, some may not, like derivative exposures, forex exposures. These were all kind of instruments that came up and made everyone excited about it. But it has sort of fallen flat on its face. Yes, I think you have to exercise, uh, you know, very very high levels of caution. And in this, at one level, I think we find here in India that the clients that we deal with are incredibly sophisticated relative to other markets. At the other level, you also have some very young businesses, emerging companies that are, you know, SME companies that are growing at a rapid clip. And I think, therefore, the onus is very much on the financial community 